I've heard many stories about haunted places in my life as a kid that grew up in the countryside. Living with my grandparents on this huge ranch, they always mentioned something scary that happened there. Things they heard in the woods and even things they saw. It was rare, but yeah, they mentioned seeing some stuff, mostly related to our local folklore in the rural areas. Most of the time, they knew it was going to scare me and make me feel tense, but they always had a smile at the end of every story, as, as if they were having fun with my worried reactions. Life was simple. I woke up early every single day to start working on the ranch, taking care of the animals, cleaning stables, things like that. From time to time, we planted new things into the soil, and we'd take out the grown things so Grandma could make her famous vegetable soup with homegrown vegetables. Sometimes, while cooking, she told me that she felt a, a strange, unnatural wind coming from the windows. The wind unlocked doors and changed salt for sugar. <laughs> I laughed when she told me that, but she wasn't very happy to remember. I guess it might be true? Because this time she, she didn't smile promptly after saying it like she used to do. There was a tale around that area uh, about a, a playful and sometimes dangerous spirit roaming the ranches in nearby forests. Some horses got loose from the stables one night, and when we found them, they all had braids on their manes and tails. Most of the stories I heard about it was something like a, a prank. Nothing to really worry about. You know, swapping salt for sugar, braiding horses' tails, stuff like that. But sometimes I've heard scary ones. I was just a kid and I think people didn't want to scare me with these stories. Most of them I heard from a distance or sneaking nearby a campfire with my grandparents' friends talking about something creepy that happened. Missing animals, mutilated cows, missing cousins. I used to walk with my grandpa deep in the forest to play some traps and hunt occasional rabbits and such, and grandpa always had a gun on him. He was also a devoted Christian. Someone told me once, and I vividly remember this, that the spirit of the forest is called sassy, and it didn't like prayers. He didn't like prayers and things that harm forests. If you start a fire near a forest, Sassy won't be happy about it, and he will scare the shit out of you. If you smoke a cigar while traveling the woods, Sassy will take it out of your mouth. The wind will blow so hard, your hat will fly away, and your cigar will vanish in a second, they used to say. So, I was walking down in the forest with my grandfather, and he was a living target, wearing a cross on his neck, smoking a pipe, and walking with a shotgun. Sassy can also make you feel confused and lost inside the forest, and that happened to us. I think he didn't like that my grandpa was hunting animals in the forest. Or maybe the possibility of burning down the forest with his pipe, I don't know. The thing is, walking in that forest felt like a, a daydream to me. I'm not sure how my grandpa perceived it, but time felt different. And I wasn't really feeling the ground while I was walking. And then it hit us. We were walking without a destination and it had been almost an hour. We were deep into the forest and we had no clue where we were or where we were heading. We definitely got lost and it was gradually getting dark. We were forced to stay the night there in an emergency camping tent since Grandpa was slow because of his age and I thought everything was under control and Grandpa was just having some fun with me, forest camping and all that stuff. In my head everything was fine. 
I was on an adventure, me and Grandpa, trying to find our way out of the forest. The old man didn't say anything bad to me, nothing alarming, like, we're lost, kid, start praying and yelling for help. I can see it clearly now as a grown-up. I mean, I would also avoid making a kid scared and panic about being lost in the wild. Especially when he's fed up with folklore and susceptible to dangerous animals. He kept himself calm, built a small tent for us, and told me to stay there while he searched for other branches so he could make a fire. At that moment, I felt a bit scared. The silence of the woods was too loud. It felt like he would get lost in there, and he wouldn't be able to find the tent again. After a while, I could no longer hear his footsteps, only the owls and the crickets. Occasionally, a small breeze through the trees. Our tent was sitting in a small, deep formation on the side of a hill. The nearby foliage was lit by the cold light of my flashlight, and the faraway bits of nature had a bluish moonshine to them, glancing off the leaves. It was too quiet. And then suddenly, that was Grandpa, I thought. My heart started racing. I, I felt like it was going to leap out of my throat. I was too scared to run towards the sound, so I just stood there without blinking, shining my flashlight into the woods. The old man followed my flight through the woods, finally reaching out to me out of the trees, wheezing, covered in dirt and tiny leaves all over his clothes. My light shone on his eyes through the dark. He quickly ran inside the tent with me, and he couldn't speak a word. I saw the blood on his shirt, and I touched it, and he jumped away from my touch. I thought, maybe someone else found him in the dark and shot him. Maybe some animal attacked him, like a cougar or something. And I asked him, uh, uh, are you okay? Hey, hey, talk to me. What, what happened in there? I heard gunshots. He looked at me, and he said, Pray with me. He held me tight, his hands shaking. I knew everything about the situation was wrong. I guess he didn't know about what Sassy disliked about people in his forest. The old man was hurt and without his smoking pipe. All he had left was the cross on his necklace. We heard noises outside. Someone, or something, was approaching us. The sound made my spine cold and my face went numb. This inhuman sound, resembling someone whistling, it made all of nature silence itself. Everything was dead, quiet, and we kept hearing that sound. We continued praying inside the tent. I was shaking, trying to urge the old man to stop doing it. And finally, I just, I, I put my hands over his mouth and he stopped praying. The whistle stopped moments after. We stood there in silence, just breathing until it went away and we could hear the leaves moving again. Hours later, when the sun was shining on the forest, at last, we managed to get home. Grandpa had an injury on his stomach. It, it wasn't bleeding that much. Uh, I didn't know if he was somehow shot or, or what, but he could walk. So I, I thought everything was fine. We were silent the whole trip home. Went back without saying a word. Later, I found out his wound was indeed a shot from his own shotgun. All we had was our own imagination as to the series of events. I've been told Sassy has his own ways to defend himself against men from the countryside, using all sorts of paranormal skills and being surrounded by folklore. My imagination was really susceptible to fantasies. But after this life-changing event, I, I cannot deny these things anymore. And after all that happened, 
I'm still traumatized by camping and prayers.